In contrast to those godless children was Samuel, who grew up, it says in verse 26, in stature and in favor, both with the Lord and with men. And we read further in chapter 3 how Samuel's ministry begins. Because God was fed up with Eli and he sent a man of God to Eli in verse 27 of chapter 2 and told him that your ministry is finished because your children are dishonoring me and dishonoring my sacrifice. And verse 29, the middle, he says, Eli, your sin is that you honor your sons more than you honor me. And then we find this wonderful verse, which is a very good verse for us to remember all through our life. In the middle of verse 30, the Lord says, Those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me will be lightly esteemed. It's a wonderful verse to live by. If you honor God, you can be sure that he will honor you. Eli did not honor God in the way he dealt with his children. And therefore he suffered and his children suffered too. But Samuel was different. In the midst of all this godless surrounding, Samuel, this little boy, grew up and he did not allow himself to be influenced by the godlessness around him. And that's the example for all, all of you and us who are living today, particularly if you are young. When you, if you can not be influenced by the godlessness you see around you, you may go into a church situation and find compromise. But you should not allow yourself to be influenced by that. And if you can be like Samuel, steadfast in your devotion to the Lord, without being corrupted, God can raise you up to be a voice in that situation. And that's what we see in the case of Samuel. When he was asleep one day, he heard a voice saying, Samuel, Samuel, and he thought Eli was calling him chapter 3. And a number of times that voice came and then Eli realized that the Lord was calling Samuel and he told him to ask the Lord to speak to him. So in verse 10, the Lord came, chapter 3, verse 10, the Lord came and spoke to Samuel and said, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, speak, for thy servant is listening. It was in the middle of the night. Here is an attitude that all of us must have, all through the day, all through our lives. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. God's, God didn't give Samuel a warning saying, tonight at midnight I'm going to come and speak to you. He had to be alert. Throughout scripture you find that the prophets, suddenly they would hear God speaking. On such and such a day of such and such a month God would speak and then for two, three months there'd be nothing. And then you, then you read that on sudden such a day of another month, God again spoke to them. They were in that state of alertness all the time. And God speaks only to those who are eager to hear his voice and who always have this attitude, speak Lord, your servant is listening. You know, your life and your ministry can be totally different if you have that attitude. God may speak to you directly from your, in your heart, in the middle of the night, he may speak to you as you're reading his word. He may speak to you in a meeting. He may speak to you through a brother or a sister. He may speak to you while you're in the midst of other people. He may speak to you when you're alone. There are many ways in God which God speaks. But we must always have this attitude of Samuel. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And that's what enables Samuel to grow up to be a prophet of God. When he listened, he could speak what God told him. And God told him, I'm going to judge Eli for his sin. And in the morning, when Eli called Samuel and said, what did the Lord say to you? Samuel told him, verse 18, everything. Even though it was bad news for Eli, he told him everything. A true servant of God is like that. Even though Eli had been very kind to Samuel, Samuel did not hesitate to tell him, God says he's going to judge you the way you have brought a curse upon your 
the way your sons have brought a curse on themselves and you did not rebuke them. And it says in Samuel grew, verse 19, this is a wonderful verse. It's a great challenge for those of us who minister the word. It's, it says here that Samuel grew and did not, and the Lord did not allow any of his words to fall to the ground. Isn't that a great challenge for you and me? That we seek the Lord so that when we minister God's word in the different situations God calls us to, whether to unbelievers or believers, that not one word we speak falls to the ground, wasted. Every word should go straight home to people's hearts, not just in the ministry of the word, but in private conversation as well. Think if in our private conversation, and we have a lot of conversation every day with each other, that we are so godly that the words that come out of our mouth are not wasted words, but words that go straight home to people's hearts. The Lord was with Samuel. That was the secret. We saw that earlier too. The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Samuel and did not allow a single word that he spoke to fall to the ground. I want to encourage you to yearn for such a form of ministry and conversation. And all Israel, verse 20, knew that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord. Now this was a time, as we read in chapter 3, verse 1, the last part of it, when word from the Lord was very rare and visions were infrequent. There was no prophet for years. And when there is no prophet, it is an indication that God has given up on his people. Throughout the period of the judges, there were kings, but there were no prophets. The last prophet was Joshua, perhaps. And he too was more of a military warrior, Moses perhaps. And since that time, there was no prophet who came forth with a word from the Lord for years. And then at last Israel knew God had finally raised up a man. They could listen to him. He was a young man. And that's the thing that encourages all of you young people. Samuel was not an old man. You don't have to wait till you're 50 years old to serve the Lord. Samuel started serving the Lord when he was so young, less than 10 years old, and grew up. And by the time he was 20, he was a prophet. What was the secret? He was listening. His attitude always was, speak, Lord. Your servant was listening. He had a serious attitude towards the word of God. Now, we read in chapter 7, verse 15, we move towards the end of Samuel's life. Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And we read that he was frequently traveling. He used to go annually on his circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah. And he judged in all these places. And he was traveling so much that he had not, not much time for his family. Now, here is a warning for those who are serving the Lord and who are traveling so much that they have no time to bring up their children in the ways of God, particularly when the children are small. And you, I want you to see what happened here. Samuel was traveling, 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 traveling. He was serving the Lord. He was doing so many things and he didn't have much time for his wife and children. And there he was traveling, 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 traveling. And then he would return to Ramah for his house was there once in a while and then he traveled again. And what was the result? His sons, it says in the next three verses, you must read those three verses together, Acts uh, 1 Samuel 8. It came about when Samuel was old, he appointed his sons as judges over Israel. That was a big mistake. Samuel made mistakes too. He had no business to appoint his sons as judges. God never called them. And apart from that, it says in verse 3, his sons did not walk in his ways but turned aside after dishonest gain and took bribes and perverted justice. What do we see there? Samuel had preached to Eli how to bring up his children. And now he failed in his own house in the way he brought up his children. Now, okay, if his children had grown up and they had left the home and uh, then they went astray. At least he should not have appointed them as judges. He was a man of discernment, a tremendous discernment. He was a prophet. He was listening 
And here is one time he stopped listening. Did he listen to God? Did God tell him in the middle of the night, appoint your sons as judges? Did he say, speak Lord, your servant is listening. Whom shall I appoint as the next judges? He stopped listening. This is what can happen that to people who start so well when they are young, that they grow older and they stop listening to what God is saying because they have a partiality towards their own children. And even though their children are godless and have no fear, at least if those children were godly, appointing them would have been okay. But imagine appointing corrupt children who had no fear of God, who took bribes and perverted justice and not having the discernment to see that. And you're a prophet of the Lord and appointing them as judges. Now I want to say this. See, there are many servants of God today whose children are not following in the ways of the Lord. And I want to tell you, be very careful not to judge them. You do not know the pressures under which many of God's servants live and work and how much they are the targets of Satan's attack. I would not judge them. I would not judge people whose children have gone astray because I say, I don't know. The Bible says, don't judge. If you want to do something for them, pray for them. If you can't pray for them, at least don't judge them. What the Bible does say in 1 Timothy 3 is that when your children are at home, if you cannot control them, you have no business to be an elder in God's house. You have no business to preach God's word to other people because if you cannot run your own home, how can you run God's house? If you cannot control three or four children in your own home and make them obey you, how are you going to control 100, 200 people in God's house? That is what 1 Timothy 3 says. But when those children have grown up and gone away from home, they have to make their own choice whether they want to follow the Lord or not. There are many outstanding servants of God whose children have gone astray after they left their home. They controlled them when they were in their home, but once they left their home, they chose their own way. And that does not disqualify that servant of God from ministry. It would disqualify him if when they were in their home, like it says in 1 Timothy 3, he could not control them. The mistake in Samuel's case was that he appointed those people as his, the ones to follow him as judges in Israel. And there we see the danger of how partiality and love for your family can blind you from what God is trying to say to you. We can stop listening to God when it concerns our own family members. Even such a wonderful man like Samuel made that mistake. And that's a warning for all of us. We don't have to judge anybody else, but we certainly can judge ourselves and learn a lot from that. And yet I would say this in Samuel's favor. Many, many good things about this man. It says in chapter 12, verse 23, Samuel said to the people, when the people were going astray, he says, to them, moreover, as for me, 1 Samuel 12, 23, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, by stopping praying for you. See, Samuel's sensitivity to sin was so great in his own life that he felt if God has appointed me as the leader of this people and I don't pray for them, I have sinned. That's what he's saying in this verse. You are the people over whom God has made me a leader. And if I don't pray for you, I sin. How many Christian leaders believe that? I hope you. If ever God gives you the responsibility to lead others. Many people like to lead many people. It's great to be a leader of so many people. Do you realize that if you become a leader and you don't pray for those people, you sin? Many people think only of murder, adultery, bad thoughts, anger, and all a sin. Here's another type of sin, not praying for those you lead. Jesus prayed for those 12 disciples regularly. All the time he was praying for them. And Samuel understood that too. He was a man of prayer. All of God's great servants have been men of prayer. Paul was like that. 
I want to show you what God himself testifies about Samuel in the book of Jeremiah. Many years later in Jeremiah 15 and verse 1, the Lord says concerning the backslidden state of Israel at that time. And he says, even if Moses and Samuel stand before me and pray, I will not change my mind about these people. What is that saying? Doesn't God listen to everybody's prayer? He certainly does. But the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And from that entire Old Testament period of Israel's history of 1000 years, from the time of Joshua to the time of Jeremiah, God picks out two people, not Elijah, not Elisha, not David, Moses and Samuel. He says there are two men in the history of Israel who were men of prayer. God says that. And he links Moses and Samuel together as men who had power with him in prayer. Samuel was one like that. An outstanding man of prayer just like Moses. It's a pity that he failed with his own children in appointing them as judges. Moses did not make that mistake. Moses had two sons too. Just like Saul, just like Samuel had sons. But Moses did not appoint his sons to take over from him. He appointed the one God told him to appoint. So even men of prayer can make mistakes because partiality and love for our flesh and blood is very close to us. That's why Jesus said we've got to cut ourselves off from that attachment to father, mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters if we want to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Now these are warnings for us and um, a wise man will learn from the mistakes of others. A foolish man will make the same mistakes himself. And we find multitudes of people making the same mistake that scripture has warned us about again and again.